learn how a handful of dirt could be the key to living forever. Scientists got one mouse to live for the human equivalent of 140 years. Oops, I changed the world. When you dream of a remote island in the Pacific, you think of palm trees, gentle breezes and crystal clear waters. Not giant heads! This is Rapa Nui, otherwise known as Easter Island. And these are the Moai. The Moai are on a whole different level. You're talking about these carved statues that weigh 14 tons. They're all facing inwards. And we think they represent an ancestor. Some of them are even wearing hats. Hats do make things a little bit more distinguished. Unless <laughs> it's that hat. Oh, uh, uh, that's better. It's incredible to think this island, thousands of miles from the rest of civilization, should hold such a precious gift. You're probably wondering, what gift? Well, we're here to talk about the accidental discovery of rapamycin, the wonder drug that can help with organ transplants, cure cancer, and maybe even stop aging. The story starts in 1964. Doctors, scientists and technicians descend upon Easter Island. No, they're not on vacation. They're here for science. Their mission is to study the entire population, now totaling some 900 people in great detail. So what they're really interested in is looking at an entire populated ecosystem. And having an island of that size offers you one of the few opportunities in which you can really do that. They plan to take blood samples, perform health and fitness tests, disease profiles, and also sample the island itself, plant, animal, and mineral. And there were some very interesting things about this island already. The population didn't get tetanus, for example. They walked around with bare feet. It's not the only thing that's bare around here. So they take soil samples like this. They thought maybe there's something special about the soil itself on Easter Island that's preventing this disease. Only a scientist could go to paradise and come back with soil. But it turns out there is something special in this soil, very special, which is a shame as the samples just get filed away and forgotten about. Anyway, a few years later, those samples magically arrive at a Canadian pharmaceutical company called Aerst. The scientists at Aerst are looking for new medicinal products from bacteria. Chief among them is microbiologist Surendra Segal. Surin and his team take those samples, do some science on them, and then grow bacteria buried in the soil. So after years of, of research, in 1972, Sarin isolates this one bacterium, Streptomyces hydroscopicus, and he finds out that it's good at killing the fungus that causes thrush. No, not the bird! The fungal yeast infection experienced by men and women in their nether regions. No, not the Netherlands. The bits between... Oh, it doesn't matter. So you can imagine his relief that after years, he finally has this result. And so he then says, well, what is this actual bacterium making that's so important? The team isolates the active ingredient that kills the fungus and calls it rapamycin after Rapa Nui, the island where the samples came from. This gets him thinking, maybe this rapamycin could be useful in treating thrush. But first, they need to ensure it's safe. The next step is to see if it works inside living animals. They test rapamycin in mice and discover that it's not toxic to mice. Hey! But then he hits a snag. Uh. The immune systems of the mice are being suppressed, and this is a problem. When you're treating somebody with a disease, you don't want to knock down their immune system. And this leads to some big snags as far as promoting this as a pharmaceutical. Oh dear. It looks like all that time digging around on Rapa Nui could have been better spent. But Surin doesn't give up that easily. He does further tests and discovers that rapamycin 
doesn't just stop immune cells from growing, it can also stop all cells from growing. It looks like this failed as a cure for yeast infections, but could be useful after all. He thinks, wait a minute, this could be even more important. This could be a treatment for cancer. Now that's a very big deal. You're not wrong there. One in every two people will get some sort of cancer in their lifetime. One in five will die from it. If this soil bug can somehow stop those cells, then this is a very big deal. Cancer cells divide very, very actively. So if you can stop that division, you know that you've got something that's going to stop tumor growth. Up until now, the drugs used have been cytotoxic, meaning they go out to kill the cancerous cells, taking out healthy ones along the way. But rapamycin is cytostatic, meaning it stops the cancer cells from growing. But it allows healthy cells to, to remain and stay healthy. And this leads to a whole new way to treat cancer. The problem is it, there's a lot of difficulty in turning rapamycin into a drug that can be administered intravenously, which is really what you want in this type of drug. Now, this is usually the point in the story where we tell you how the scientists work diligently to overcome these obstacles and create a new wonder drug that saves lives and changes the world. But we're not going to tell you that. Not yet. In 1983, Surin's company don't care one iota for our story and instead downsize and relocate from Montreal to Princeton, New Jersey. Over 90% of the staff are let go. Surin stays with the company, but his rapamycin is shelved. So it looks like rapamycin is going to be consigned to the dustbin, but Surin isn't willing to give up. He thinks he's found a miracle drug. Before his lab is shut down, he brews up a large batch of bacteria and sneaks them home. Sticks it in his freezer and labels it, don't eat, just in case anybody doesn't know. And there it sits. On the day of his move to Princeton, he packs the ice cream tub with dry ice and sets off on the 400 mile journey into the US. Now this is, is not exactly legitimate. He's smuggling biological samples across an international border. Greg, it's only bacteria, it's not botulism. I can't imagine what he said when they asked him, do you have anything to declare? <laughs> well, he certainly didn't say, fancy some ice cream? Anyway, it goes from sitting in his freezer in Montreal to sitting in his freezer in New Jersey. It's now the 1980s, and while the bacteria stays frozen, the medical world is on fire. Clever doctors and scientists have figured out how to transplant organs. It's quite the fashion. The most commonly transplanted organ is the kidney, and there are celebrity examples of this. Selena Gomez, Tracy Morgan, even Tina Turner. You see, even Tina Turner's doing it. The problem is that when you transplant an organ, your body sees it as an alien invader and wants to reject it. So there's really only two solutions. One is to find an identical twin and take an organ from them. And the other is to develop a drug with immunosuppressive properties so your body doesn't attack the new organ. Ah, remember those mice? Yes, we know of a drug that suppresses the immune system, don't we? Rapamycin. And it just so happens that Surin has some five-year-old bacteria hanging around in his freezer. Are they still alive? Will they grow? Luckily, they do. And rapamycin research is heated up again. Now, this is where we tell you how the scientists work diligently to overcome obstacles and create a new wonder drug that saves lives and changes the world. <gasps> The scientists figure out how to deliver the drug orally. It's a commercial success. Rapamycin, sold as Rapamune, is given FDA approval in 1999. It's market valued at over $275 million. But Surin isn't done yet. It's great that Rapamycin can be used to help with transplants. But he's convinced that it could also work with cancer. And now, he has skin in the game. In 1998, he's diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. 
The doctor tells Surin he's only got six months, but Surin replies that he'll live another five years. Rapamycin has not been approved as a cancer treatment yet, but Surin is confident that the drug will work. And if this isn't your first time watching Oops, then you'll know exactly what happens next. He starts using it on himself. Of course he does. Of course he documents all of it because this is his work. And six months comes and it goes. And another six months comes and goes and another and another. Five years later, he's still traveling the world, giving lectures. And of course he starts to wonder, okay, this certainly I like to think is from the rapamycin, but how can we be sure? The scientist inside him decides there's only one way to find out, and he stops taking the drug. What's gonna happen? Well, he's gonna die. The cancer comes back with a vengeance, and within six months, it spread to his lungs. He works up until the very day of his death, six months later, where he writes a paper extolling the virtues of rapamycin. Surin's dedication to the scientific method costs him his life, but his discovery goes on to save the lives of countless others. Why is rapamycin derivative Toracel is given approval to treat kidney cancers in 2007, and many more cancer treatments follow. Not only that, but because rapamycin blocks cell growth, it could well have incredible anti-aging properties. Using rapamycin extends the life expectancy of yeast, worms, fruit flies, all the way up to mice. In fact, scientists got one mouse to live for the human equivalent of 140 years. So it may well be that rapamycin has a future in both saving and extending all of our lives. Not bad for a bacteria found in dirt. It's so lucky that rapamycin was found in the first place. Then Surin's incredible determination to see it brought to market. I personally think we should make a 13-foot-tall, 14-ton stone statue of Surin.